Hey guys, how we doing? Rough Rooster Knife Sharpening. <clears throat> it's kind of weird. I've got a different layout for recording, which y'all know I ain't put a video out in like a week and a half or two weeks. So uh, let me get some of this stuff put out of the way. I've got something kind of interesting here I was, I'm going to show you guys. and um, <clears throat> I'm working on a knife that belongs to Timothy Ridgedale. Uh, this is the other knife that... He sent along with this one that you guys seen me do a video on. Yeah, I know I'm running behind. I got to get this stuff out to people. Um, I'll explain a little bit here in just a minute. But I was uh, I was sharpening on this guy, and I've been reprofiling this thing for about an hour. It was it was really screwy. So let me see which side. That... Okay, it's the other side here. So if you guys notice. Not not the overall shape of the blade, but look at the shape of the edge as compared to the shape of the knife. It's it's disproportionate. It's it's out of proportion. This part of the knife has been sharpened a lot more than this has. And sometimes that's just the way people sharpen, which is fine. But you can see this right here is more narrow than this. We got a big old belly here, which is good for what he's going to be using this for. But if you guys look here, see if I can get it on the camera, actually. There's a burr from the tip. Oh, shit. Hopefully you guys can see that. And it stops right about here. Let me get it more centered. So, in order for me to make that burr go all the way back here, I'm going to have to continue straighten that, straightening this out from the very tip to right here, which that'll make this entire blade reduce in life. So you guys know just as well as I do, this is the most unused, this portion right here is the most unused part of the knife. So we're not going to worry about that right now. I've already talked to Timothy about it this morning and I told him I said when you do it again send it to me and I said over time you know I'll work that out of there and get the whole edge correct so I am going to work on this a little bit more I started the initial bevel setting on a coarse Norton India and then I went over to my coarse silicon carbide the reason being the way that a coarse Norton sharpens seems a lot softer than a coarse crystal on silicon carbide, whatever you want to call it. This is a Norton too. Um, we are going to continue working on this a little bit and finish sharpening. So I've already got a burr on this side, so I'm just going to continue flip it over on the other side, get me another burr, and then we're going to go to the other side of the stone or another stone, just depending on how it goes here. It's a heavy burr. And I know a lot of you guys, this is a buck 119 if you haven't already noticed, but I know a lot of you guys are probably like, ah, 428C steel is not going to be very hard or whatever. Well, this is not 420HC steel. If you look at the date code on the bottom of the tang, that's from the early 90s, which means this was either an old run of 440C or it was the very limited run of 425M. Some of that stuff's a pain in the ass to sharpen. So we're going to continue on this dude right here. And I, I'm filming with the back of my phone, so I can't see. I've, I've got it kind of squared away there to where I know you guys can see what I'm actually doing here. But I don't really know if my hand's in the way much. I hope it's not. We're not going to be on this stone very long, guys. So just bear with me here. I 
love sharpening these old bucks. I, I don't know why in the heck I don't have more of them. All right, so we've got a really, eh, let me do just a little bit more here. We've got a really, really good um, burr forming just from those few strokes. And when you pull a burr up, burr up on the other side of a knife where you've already got one and you can pull one up that quick you've got a really crisp apex and that's good so okay i'm gonna show you guys here see that burr down there hear it All right, blot this stone. I'm gonna move over to the other side. I've been using the hell out of these. Wayne um, sent me the majority of these uh, Norton Oil stones and Philip Cook, I just talked to him the other day, as a matter of fact, yesterday or the day before, one of the two. And uh, he sent me that Norton Course India and I have been using the hell out of these things, guys. But one thing I was going to tell you guys, so um, this is this is uh, about the middle of July, and I'm going to, we're, we're finishing our house up come this week, or come the end of next week. A week from today, our house is going to be finished come hell or high water. God forbid, unless somebody falls and breaks their leg or whatever. Um, so that's, that's one reason I haven't posted in a while because I've been busy at work because we went back to work and then I'm off this coming week and next week, this, well, this coming week I'm off, like I said, and, um, I'm going to be posting very sporadically. So Y'all just bear with me. I'll, I'll do a video when I can, but I've got a lot on my plate right now. And I've got to start doing some doctor visits here pretty soon. Um, some of you guys know I've already spoke with you about it, but I've got some, some health problems that's getting worse that needs to be addressed. So... Now, these knives that are Timothy's, he is actually using these things. I mean, these these knives are uh, going to be used to process a lot of fish, probably a lot of game, and I mean, they're actually going to be used. They're not going to be sitting there on somebody's desk or whatever. These things are going to be thrown on a truck dash. They're going to get bloody. They're going to get nasty. They're going to get all kinds of crap on them. So we want to give him a really, really nice edge to work with. He told me that, uh, I talked to him a few minutes ago. He said, uh, that old, uh, K bar that I done a video on. He said, you could probably fill up a semi trailer with all the catfish steaks that's been made with that thing which I thought that was pretty cool okay we've got a burr on that side from this stone so we're going to flip it over and we're going to start on the other side Guys, as you go through these oil stones, I just about cut the shit out of myself. As you go through these oil stones and do a grip progression with these things, it's it's a completely different feel than uh, whoops. 
it's a completely different feel than progressing through diamonds. And you just, you get that feel on these stones. You just know that you're going to have a fantastic edge. really fine burr right there all right so we're going to be done with this stone go ahead and set this to the side over here get my alcohol and clean this one up get that oil off of this thing because i'm getting ready to come on Use an Arkansas on it. I think I'm gonna go to an Arkansas or I may go to a diamond. Hell, who knows? Whatever I feel like here in just a second. Feel that nasty. Alright, so spray this dude right here off, get all the oil and crap off it so we don't contaminate our stone. Oh, let's see here. Ah, oh, hell with it. Let's go to a soft. Why not? This is Dan's 12 by 2 by 1 number 1 quality. Alex Peterson gifted this to me and I have used it so much really like this stone especially for larger knives like this let me make sure that this thing's in camera view yeah we're good it's my little girl I had to lock the door because everybody's here today <laughs> Funny thing about a soft Arkansas is, for me, you can see where it's cutting metal right here. For me, soft Arkansas are kind of hard to get dialed in. Probably harder than any other Arkansas to get where, you know, you want it in that lapping progress. And I fought with this stone for several months. And I thought I had it, but it quit cutting. And, oh, damn, we're already getting a, ooh. I like that edge a lot. I like it a lot. Can't remember what movie that's from. See that little shine right there towards the tip? Doing a video, Ella. Go on, honey. I'll be out in a few minutes. She's got a mound of toys out there in the living room like you wouldn't believe. I could actually send this knife to him off the soft Arkansas and it'd be just fine because there's a fantabulous edge.
But I was going to say, I got sidetracked. Sorry, I'm sitting here thinking about what I'm doing sharpening. But the soft Arkansas, you know, like I said, I thought I had it dialed in. And it got too slick and it quit cutting. So, what did I do to this one? I can't remember. Oh. So, I got my Easy Lap Diamond stone and I just dressed this side of the stone. And I left it. And it's fantastic. Man, I like a cold Mountain Dew. So, that, that fine easy lap, they say it's like 600 grits. I, 600 grits, <laughs> 600 grit. I think it's a lot coarser than that. And I'm sitting here thinking about grits and scrambled eggs. I said a hunter, 600 grits. Hell, I might just send send this edge to him just like it is. That damn thing, holy shit. From a soft Arkansas, that right there is sharp, 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 sharp. Soft Arkansas now, guys. Mm-hmm. Look at that. That's just it's crazy sharp, just from a soft. Oop, I better put that up there. Y'all gonna get a sneak peek of the of a knife that hasn't even been reviewed on YouTube yet. There is not one review on this knife. There's only one person that's gonna watch this video that knows what I'm talking about. So y'all be looking forward to that. I've also got a new strop. I haven't had time to fool with it a whole lot. I've messed with it just a little bit. I've ordered some new stuff for a strop that we're going to be trying out here pretty soon. I've had my eye on it for a long time. And I finally pulled the trigger on it the other day. And I'm, if it's going to do what I think it's going to do, I'm glad I did. Now, as I am sharpening here, I'm not using extremely light strokes, but I'm using a lot lighter strokes than I was on the silicon carbide. So again, right there, sharp. Work on this stone just a little bit more. And then we're going to switch here.
going to go to a Dan's Hard Arkansas. Go to my lap side, the other side, I left like it was from Dan's. Damn, chair's getting where it won't hardly roll. I'm going to have to get me another chair here pretty soon, guys. This is the hardest hard Arkansas I have ever used. It's got a certain ring to it when you're sharpening on it. It almost sounds like a translucent. I mean, this thing is dense. I'd buy another one of these in a heartbeat. And guys, this isn't even a number one. This come off a of Dan's special page. So this, this is considered a high quality. That is strange right there. What the hell happened? This actually dulled the edge. Well, no. It just made it extremely slick. Okay, so, man, that thing's sharp, but it's it's a slick, it's an extremely slick edge. So, we're going to stop right there on the stones. And there are two things that you can do when this happens. One, you can back up to your previous stone where you had a good edge. Or two... You can start with a coarser compound and go up to a fine. So in this case, I've already removed plenty of metal from that knife. So I am going, we don't want something too slick. I'm going to use some Bark River White on this thing and see what it does. Turn the guy this way a little bit. This Bark River White compound is some very good stuff. I can't remember the grit on it, but it's on up there a little bit. The thing I like about it, 
it can leave a, a polished edge and it can leave a semi polished edge. But it always leaves a good bite. Man, that is weird. That damn hard arc. There's no way that I could continue with this knife to a translucent in the black. It just it wouldn't do any good. I haven't run into this in a long time. That's got me high. Boy, I just filleted my thumb. Let's take a look at this edge here. Thing is shiny. It's not mirrored, but uh, there's enough. Oh yeah, that thing is just silly sharp. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and call this one done, guys. It it feels weird, like. But you guys can see there where I just shaved my arm with it. <laughs> it's freaking sharp. I, I haven't had that happen in a long time. And, you know, now that I think of it, um, the last time that I had that happen was with an older buck knife. Because when I when I first found out about it, um, I can't remember what buck it was, um, but I was sharpening one of the older bucks that I used to have, and I sit down, and I didn't even feel the edge. I was just in a sharpening zone going because, you know, I really don't test my edge a whole lot when I'm, you know, sharpening off camera by myself. Because, you know, I, I I know what's going on. Well, I went all the way up to a black Arkansas. And this thing was shining. I'm like, oh, man, it's going to be sharp. Stuck my thumb to it, and it wouldn't cut hot butter. And I was like, what have I done? So I got to looking at it real close. And the, the apex and everything was perfect. But... It just did not take an edge past my heart, Arkansas. So, there we go, guys. Mr. Ridgedale, both of your knives are done, and they'll be in the mail this week. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you would, give me a thumbs up, share this video, subscribe to me. Um, if you haven't already, uh, spread the word a little bit. I like showing you guys these videos, and uh, I've also got a patron account, too. If you guys would be so kind to go over and visit my patron account and help me out, I would appreciate it. So, y'all have a good rest of your Sunday. Take it easy.